So, let's start painting some Horus Heresy Space Marines. First up, we're going to be covering Death Guard. I was lucky enough to get one of these models from the Horus Heresy Open Day at Warhammer World. What's interesting is this seems to be spray painted in a Sons of Horus colour, which, well, at least at the time of recording, isn't actually a product, so this could be a sneak peek. First up, I'm going to base the entire model in Rhinox Hide, and this is going to give us a deep brown base layer, because we're going to be doing some underpainting and chipping away on this model to give it the really warm weather effect. So just cover the entire model in Rhinox Hide. Next up, I'm adding some colour modulation to this layer with Mornfang Brown, and I'm going to stipple this on, paying close attention to things like the bottoms of the legs, the knee pads, the elbow pads, anything that would be a bit more weathered and worn and catch the edges of things is going to get a bit more stippling. Next, I'm masking off the shoulder pads because they're a different colour. Again, I use Silly Putty for this because it's much better than blue tack. So next we're going to be applying some Warn Effects Fluid from AK Interactive. If you don't have this, Vallejo make their own chipping medium, or you can just use hairspray, but I find this gives me a bit more working time. Just lightly spray it across the surface of the model, trying not to let it pool in any particular areas. So next I'm using Carrick Stone from Citadel Colour, and I want to get this down before the AK Warn Effects Fluid has fully cured. I'd say you've got about an hour depending on local temperature before that AK Warn Effects becomes pretty much unusable. So for the highlights, I'm going to use Typhon Ash. Now this is only available in the Citadel Air range, but you can swap this out for something like Screaming Skull, or you could just get Typhon Ash and paint it on. It actually paints on pretty nicely, to be honest. And when you're highlighting models, try not to just do a 45 degree zenithal highlight all the way around. Try and focus on the forms to actually pick out the individual parts of the model. So things like the backpack where it curves, it's a cylinder, do a line across it. Anything round, just try and do a spot where the light would hit. Anything that sticks out really like toes or the backs of ankles, try and highlight those as well. Next up, start applying water to begin reactivating that AK Warn Effects fluid. And then as you're reactivating this, if you're using a brush, I'm using the Citadel dry brush here, uh, the firm hairs on that will start to pick up the edges or any raised details of paint on the model. So it's easy to do things like round the ankles, any sticking out parts, the knee pads, but this will also pick up on areas like the texture where on this model, because of the spray paint pattern that was on underneath, each one of those individual dots, it made it easy to pick up bits of paint. So I went a bit heavy handed with this, but I'll show you how to recover that in the next step. And that step, which is completely optional depending on how the last stage went, is just highlighting or stippling again using your highlight colour. So in this case with the Typhon Ash, I'm going over some of the raised areas and some of the bits that have weathered themselves a bit too heavily with the previous stage. And now the bit I always find really therapeutic to watch. And is it just me? Please let me know down in the comments, but I love watching the masking material get removed to show the base colours underneath. So next up, we're going to be doing the masking in the opposite way. So this time, leave the shoulder pads, but mask the rest of the model. And then once again, we're going to be using Warn Effects Fluid or whatever you want to choose. And this time, just apply it to the shoulder pads. And to paint those, we're going to use the rather obvious Death Guard Green. And like with the previous armor steps, just spray the entire surface of these shoulder pads with that color. And to highlight this, we're going to use Ogryn Camo. And like with the previous step, we're going to focus on specific points. So here it's really simple. It's the uppermost point of the shoulder pads. Just focus a spot in that area and then let it gently fade out into the rest of the armor. And then just like before with the worn effects fluid, get it wet and using a brush or any kind of scratching tool, you can start making weathering marks across the surface. And then once again, we're going to pull away the putty to do the reveal. I'm just going to let this play here because I like it. But honestly, if you want me to cut this part out of the video in future videos, let me know. I think it's cool. I really get a kick out of it. Maybe that's me. Maybe I'm weird. But again, let me know down in the comments. I really want feedback about this particular part.
Next, we're going to take a little bit of seraphine sepia, and this we're going to also dab on using a sponge. And we're going to focus on lower areas, so any of the shadow areas. And all this has to do is to add a bit more dirty, weathered colour modulation to the armour itself. And now for some actual painting. So I'm going to start with coal black from Proacryl, mainly because it's super thin, it's one coat, and it's not a true black, which gives us the opportunity to shade it down a touch afterwards. With this, I'm painting the weapon, the soft parts of the armor, any pipes, and the eyes. For anything silver, I'm using Gunmetal Grey from Vallejo's Metal Color Range, and this is going to paint everything that's silver. So things like the metal parts on the gun, the vents on the back of the backpack, and even the chest straps are going to be painted in silver with this color. Next, I'm using the copper color, again from Vallejo's Metal Color Range, and this we're going to paint the few copper areas on this armor. Here, for the best control, because I'm trying to get into a model which has already been pre-assembled, I'm using my Artis Opus Series M Size Zero brush, which is part of our starter set. As you'll see here, I've got a lot more control with the brush, but it does require me to return to the palette a lot more frequently, so that I don't flood the brush and then flood the miniature. And now it's just a case of coating the entire thing in a gloss varnish. So a bit of a boring bit to watch here because it's a clear coat going down on top of the model. Basically don't put it on too heavy, otherwise you'll end up clogging up details. Once this coat was dry, which was several hours later, I used the dark brown panel line accent color from Tamiya. Now you could substitute this for uh, any dark brown oil paint or even something like Agrax Earthshade. But what I like about this is you've got a lot of control and with it being enamel based, if you make any mistakes, you can clean it up really easily. Now we're going to apply a decal using Microset and Microsol. First, soak your decal on some tissue paper and then using a brush that's soaked in Microset, just drag it and apply it to the surface of the model and then move it around until it's in the place that you want it. Then just leave it for about 10, 15, 20 minutes at the most. Then using something sharp, I gently picked away at the edge of the transfer. As you can see here though, it was still a bit too wet, so I had to leave it to dry a bit and then go back and just pick out to match up the weathering that's already on your shoulder pad. And then just give it a light coat with Microsol and leave that to dry and this will embed the transfer into the surface and texture of your model. And then I'm going to use some Nuln oil to shade all of the black and metal parts on the model. Then I'm going to highlight those same parts with Celestra Grey. And the reason I'm doing this now and not before the gloss coat is basically because I forgot. And I'm using the Artis Opus Series D dry brush for this because it saves so much time when it comes to edge highlighting. Going up one step further, we're going to repeat the process with Ulthra and Grey. Using the texture palette lets us control exactly how much paint we have on the brush. And with this, I'm going to paint within the edges and the furthest most points that we did in our previous stage. Next up, we're using Abtalung 502's Copper Oxide Patina Color mixed with a bit of artist grade mineral spirits. And then with this, we just randomly dab it to the undersides of any of the copper areas on the armor. I highly recommend using synthetic brushes with any oil stages, mainly because the solvents used will have a tendency to destroy animal hairs. And then using turquoise lights, we're going to apply that lightly to the areas where the previous colour has pulled rather heavily. Just like with rust, with oxidisation, it tends to be a much brighter, richer colour in areas where you've got heavier buildup. So this adds a touch more visual interest and a bit of colour modulation to those heavier weathered areas. Next, we're taking Abtalung 502's Light Rust, and we're just going to apply tiny little spots of this on areas of the armor where we previously wiped it away in the stage where we removed paint using the AK Warn Effects fluid. And then again, for some color modulation, we're also going to use the Oxide Patina from Abtalung 502. And just like the previous step, you need to apply this pretty much next to where you've put it in the previous stage. So just mix up the colors and let them run and mix together on the surface of the model. But this just gives a lighter tone to what we previously did. Then using an old soft brush, just brush downwards and blend this into the surface of the model. So this will naturally create streaks along the edges. When you're doing this though, just be conscious of which way the part of the model would be if it were upright. So obviously the model is posed in a certain position. And if you were to go horizontally down from that position, it would look a bit daft with streaks going across the surface of the model rather than a more natural down approach. So things like the leg where they're at an angle, Instead of going directly down, try and follow the length of the leg. 
And then to seal it, we're going to use Matte Varnish by Vallejo. Now, this is a boring bit to watch, so please pay attention to the words because those are important here. Shake this stuff until your arm aches, and once it aches, use the other arm and keep repeating that process until both arms are completely dead. If you've got a Vortex mixer, that's really going to help here. And when you're applying it to the model, do it really, really thin. If it starts to turn glossy on your model, it'll probably dry glossy, so just dust it along the surface as best you can. And then finally, just base the model however you like, and then I like to use a weathering powder to tie it into the base. Here I'm using grey ash because well, it's fairly neutral and pretty much works with everything, especially when you've got stone on your base. And finally, we're using Vallejo's 70950 Black from their model colour range, which is an absolutely fantastic black. It thins down nice, it'll paint the rim of your base in just one coat, and it dries with a lovely semi-matte sheen. And that's it, one completed Horus Heresy Death Guard model. So that's one down, 17 to go. Just need to get hold of this box set and I can start doing the others. Please let me know what you think down in the comments. And also, please thank our patrons who are on the screen right now. Without these guys, we wouldn't be able to make content like this. So if you want to get early access to things like this, along with a lot more on our website, please consider signing up. Other than that, that's all from me. Thanks for watching. Fohammer out.